So let's go ahead and just start reverse engineering this Mega Touch Ion here. All right, so we have Yitra open. We're going to create a new project. So I'd click on File, New Project, Non-Shared Project, and we're just going to go ahead and choose a directory to put it in. And I'm going to put it in the directory with the binary that I have. And I'm just going to call it um, Mega touch we have to give it a project name so there's a directory to store the project files and then a project name itself and then let's go ahead and just import the file and the binary is start which we got from the mega touch okay and let's hit okay Now let's double click to analyze it and this will take a while. So we got some warnings that it couldn't demangle some function names. Don't worry about that that's just trying to turn when C++ code is compiled it um, makes weird names for each function the mangling is turning it back into something that's kind of human readable you know what, I can't do mangle these they don't really care, click on OK and I'm going to save my work because that took five minutes I didn't do anything, but it took five minutes to do that, so I don't want to have to go through that again. Okay, and let's look at uh, what functions we have. So let's choose our um, functions window. And I move that over here, and I'm probably going to get rid of. Yeah, let's just minimize or make these smaller, and make these a little bit more easy to read. So lots of functions here. Now, if you watch the other Mega Touch video that I did for uh, the Force 2011, you'll remember that Key Manager was an important class. So let's just do let's just type in Key Manager, and see if we find anything related to that. So there's 56 items. It doesn't actually show the name. I'm assuming that these are all methods of the Key Manager class. If I remember correctly, let's click on just uh, is 1995 Dallas Key, and yeah, you can see up here it says Key Manager is 1995 is Dallas Key. I, I don't know how to get that label to actually show that. That would be nice. Ida shows that it would it would actually say it on the display like this, and that's easier to to group functions by the name. I'll have to look into that. That would be really good to have that. Anyway, so Key Manager though it it knows when I so when I search for that, it's actually doing that, so that's good. So we were looking at the key manager class. I'm going to sidetrack onto some material that is not 100% necessary if you just want to figure out how to hack this thing. But well, actually, if you're doing it from scratch, it is 100% necessary um, because it's important that you understand it, what I'm about to talk about. Um, it's a it's a common thing with C++ and reverse engineering that you need to know and we could probably get past it based on the knowledge that we have from the 2011 force evo and just do what we did there and not worry about what i'm doing here but to do this on the 2011 force um, i needed to do this and this is a really good skill to learn so we're going to talk about c plus plus and c plus plus classes now in c plus plus a class is an object. If you don't know what a C++ class is, you, you really should re research it. But basically, an, a, a C++ is a, a, a class is a self-contained object that knows how to do things to each other to itself. For example, you might have car object, and the object might have something called a method, drive or park or accelerate, and you use the methods of the object to manipulate the object. So this is written in C++, and a big 
important class is this key manager class that actually manages the key, which we need to obviously bypass some things about. So a couple things you need to see plus plus you need to know is there's something called a constructor. A constructor is the method that is named the same as a class. So you see over here, key manager, this is the name of the class, colon, colon, and this is the name of the, the method. This is called the constructor. Um, and what that happens is every time a new object is created, the constructor is called to set up, to initialize the object. Just the same, you have something called a destructor, which is the name of the class with a, um, a tilde in front of it. Now, why do we care about that? Well, because the constructor actually sets up the object. So it's going to tell us, as it's building, initializing the object, you can often get a lot of data, important information about the object from the constructor. And one of the first things we need to know is the size of the object. Because if we know the size of the object, that's going to help us up, help us a lot. So in Ghidra here, we have key manager. I don't know why there are two constructors. They actually, if you look at them, there's two constructors, and they both do the same thing. Um, I don't know why that is. Um, probably only one of them is being used. I, I honestly don't know why there's two. But I'm not going to even speculate. Um, we we want to find the size of this object, and then we want to actually see what happens when this object initialized. So what you can do to find the size is usually you just find where this this constructor is called, referenced from. So we're going to click on it over here and click references show references to and you can see here I have this call key manager now right before that should probably be something called the new um, operator and it will have a size and then that's gonna return a pointer which is gonna be the first or the only no it doesn't have to be the only it's gonna be the first parameter to the constructor and you can see that happens you see right here where key manager is called we see uh, operator new and a size, which is A34. Use calculator to figure that out. So we had A38, oh, I'm sorry, A34. We go to programmer mode. A34, we want hex, A34, and then decimal, okay, 2612. Well, there you go. So. That's important. Why is that important? Because now we know the size of this object. So <coughs> now we can go into this. We're going to write that down, 2612. We're going to go to the key manager. This is the constructor. And we're going to click on this. So we're going to click on this over here. And we're going to do edit data type. So we're clicking on this. Now this is this in C++ is a pointer to the object itself. So whatever call this key manager constructor, remember, allocated some space for the object itself, right here, and then called this in, um, constructor to actually initialize the object. So we know the object is this size, and then um, again, this, this pointer is just the a pointer to where the object is stored. So it's obviously this memory that was allocated. So we'll click on that, and then in the C++ over in the decompile window, we're going to click on right click, choose edit data type, and we're going to put over here the size. 2612. Okay. And um, then we're going to save it. Oh, actually, we're going to, yeah, it's already got the name, Key Manager. Okay, now it knows that. And look at this, it already filled in a bunch of other stuff for us. It dereferenced these pointers. I'm going to hit Control Z. I don't know if that will actually undo it. Control Z. No. Oh, yeah, it did. So you see here, um, we have some references like this plus some number, um, this. In, um, in brackets, um, because right now th the code doesn't know anything about how big the key manager object is, because I just undid the, the, the fact that I told it. But once I tell it how big it is, it can actually make these into actual, um, like in C, structure dereferences. So again, I'm going to just right click on auto edit data type, and I'm going to put the size in here 2612. Okay, enter, save, and you'll notice, look at this, all this stuff here goes to C-like structure references. So this is much more readable. Now, this is confusing here because you have this all these pointer address manipulations.
Okay, so we have these pointer, the address of, and then dereferences. This is because it doesn't know what the actual field sizes are. So once we know that, we'll start filling that in. Okay, um, here it says undefined four, so it thinks it knows what it is. Something four bytes. So I'm going to actually go ahead and click on this. Control was it? Control L and type in here what the type is, and I'm just going to put a um, uint. 32 because we know it's a 4 byte integer. Okay. And there, it, it gets rid of all that junk because now it knows what it is. All right. Um, so you can do that when, as soon as you know what something is, you can. And here, we actually probably know what this is. This is a, a character. This is probably another character. Might not be another character. But here we have eight. Um, we're setting something at address, at offset, 984 and hex to 0. And then we're setting 985. So this has got to be a character, right? It's only one byte. So we'll just put a car. And then I don't know if this is, this actually could be an integer, but I think it's not. I think it's a car. Um, I'm going to leave it as unknown, actually, since I don't know for sure what it is. OK. <clears throat> so um, <coughs> now, though, this is really good because one of the things you'll see is these all, all these functions in the key manager functions are very some a lot of these are very simple functions so let's click on um, here we go get key status if you look at the code it's very simple this is called an accessor or a getter um, what it does is it takes when you call this key manager get key status it's going to return some field some component of that key, um, something called a, a member um, variable. Okay, so let's look at this, this function. It's a very simple function, and many of these getters, these accessors, are going to be like that. Date. All right? It's going to return, when you call date, key manager date, it's going to return the address of the object field with offset 6 F2. So we can go ahead. Um, often we will know actually the size of the object um, by the getters. Um, sometimes we won't actually. Sometimes there'll be a pointer, which which itself is is actually um, useful to know. But um, what we know this field now is date. So I'm going to go ahead and label this. I'm going to hit L to rename the field to date. And now you can see it's returning this date. Okay. And again, it's a this date is actually this is a um, the address of this field. So it's returning a pointer to where this field is in the object. Okay. So however big date is, um, we don't know what that is right now, but we know that it's going to be stored in this field. So, and if we right click on edit data type, we can see now, all well, this data type is so huge. But if we go to wherever that was, date, there it is. Is it that one? Yeah, date, okay. Is the name. We don't know what data type it is yet. Um, but let's, let's just go through as many of these as we can and um, see what we can do. So let's start at the bottom. Web portal URL. All right, here we go. This field um, at this offset is the storage for the URL for whatever web portal is. Okay, so let's just change that. We'll hit L, web portal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna camel case it URL. Okay. All right. So now it's very obvious what this is, and this will be labeled in our object. And the more we build an object it's going to actually start to make sense. We're going to start to understand what other code does when it's referencing these objects, because we'll know what's stored there. Okay, Version. So um, here, we're, we're, we're again, we're returning a pointer to this field 70B. Let's go ahead and hit version. Okay. Value. Ooh. This says it's returning a float, which doesn't make sense to me right now. So we're going to maybe it is. We're gonna we're gonna skip that one. Unit time. 
I don't know what this means. But we can see if a certain parameter is one value, it's going to be one field. If the value is different, it's going to be another field. So this is probably um, making up for different key types. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that later. All right, so let's just keep going through these and seeing any ones that we can immediately label easily. Okay. Oh, that's too complex. We're going to skip that one. Okay. So this is returning a four, uh, four bytes, an integer. Software year supported. So based on the key, it's telling you what the software is. So it's going to read whatever's stored in that data or whatever's stored in that field. And um, when, you, when you call this, and then based on that value, it's going to give you back some value. So we here we know this represents the software year supported. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this is the value stored at, um, in 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 the class, and we'll just type that. We'll change that to L. Bvar is software year, and we'll call it encoded since it's going to look at this value and actually write back something more. Um, useful to the programmer. Okay, so uvar is this value, and if software year encode is not equal to 16 and less than 17, or is it not equal to 16, but it's less than 17, if it's equal to 14, we're going to return this value, also we're going to turn, okay. Um, doesn't it actually matter what this code does for us. We now know though that at this part in the this offset into the um, and I don't remember what the offset is because I changed the name, but it's software you're supported, we we're filling out this value, this 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 field where so here we go. We know at uh, offset twenty four thirty six that's uh, something that represents the software year this key is uh, is used for basically. Okay, so software version supported, same thing here. Um, that one's already there. We already marked that. Uh, did I mark that? I don't remember marking that. Oh yeah, I did. Well, software version supported just returns the the va the um, value of that software year supported. Okay. Server URL. Okay, we know. And again, we're storing some some text that's going to be a URL. So let's go ahead and change that. We're going to hit L, and we'll just call that server. URL. And we don't might not know what the server URL is, but we know that this is going to be like a web address, HTTP something something something, to something that this mega touch unit is probably going to reach out to based on this key. Okay, so um, probably this is the mega touch network servers, you know, because they had mega touch had this um, gaming network thing where you could you know upload your scores kind of thing. So this is probably the, the server it's connecting to. And well, we can again we'll we'll see how that's more that's used, but we're just going to go through all these and fill out this class as much as we can. And then we'll talk about um, analyzing the actual init function in a little bit.